Hello, my name's Chris and welcome to another of my weird camera lens reviews. Uh, by that I mean the camera lens itself is weird, not the review, nor me. Well, anyway, what I have for you today is a lens that's, that's not so much weird as it is relatively unheard of and pretty unique. The Tamron 28-105mm f2.8. Released back in 1997, I think, and discontinued some time ago now, it is the only f2.8 SLR zoom lens in the world to go from a wide angle of 28mm all the way into 105mm. Normally they stop at 70mm. What a fantastic zoom range for a fast lens. That wide f2.8 maximum aperture lets in a healthy amount of light, enabling faster shutter speeds and a brighter viewfinder to look through, and it also gives you a nice out of focus background, especially at 105mm, where that narrow depth of field at f2.8 means that this lens could perform particularly nicely for portrait shots. Well, if it turns out to be sharp enough, more on that later. This is also a unique lens for video work. Video makers are always on the lookout for zoom lenses with a constant maximum aperture, as they let you zoom in and out without annoying changes in light levels. That's why Canon's 24-105mm f4 L lens is so popular for video work. Well, this old Tamron lens has almost the same zoom range, but lets in twice as much light, and it will cost you much, much less than the Canon lens. So, if you're the kind of video maker who likes to make long zooming shots and you want to shoot lower light scenes, then this old Tamron lens offers you the unique ability to do that particular job. Now because Tamron discontinued this lens many years ago, its relative obscurity these days means that you can find it on eBay for very reasonable prices as no one else is really looking for it yet. Its obscurity also means that I'm going into this review relatively blind, because although I've been scouring the internet for information about it, I couldn't really find much about this lens at all. As you might be able to guess from its age, the Tamron 28-105mm f2.8 comes from the film era, so it's designed to be a full-frame camera lens, and its zoom range will work best on expensive full-frame cameras, or indeed film cameras, if you still use film. You can still use this lens on your less expensive APS-C digital SLR cameras, like the Canon Rebel series, 60D, 70D and so on. But the widest angle of 28mm isn't a very wide angle on an APS-C camera, so it won't be a very convenient general purpose zoom lens for most people. So I'm going to test this lens on a Canon 6D full frame camera, but for your interest, I'll also give you test results from my trusty old Canon 6DD with its APS-C sensor. Firstly, let's look at the lens's build quality. Unsurprisingly, the thing is a bit of a brick, being huge and weighing almost a kilo or a couple of pounds. The front element has an enormous 82mm filter thread, so any filters you buy will be pretty expensive. The lens is too old to have any kind of image stabilization system, so you'll have to make do without it I'm afraid. As you can see here, that results in rather shaky handheld video work, so you'll probably have to use some kind of rig or tripod to get smoother results. The zoom ring isn't amazingly smooth on this copy of the lens, in fact it's a little stiff, so that's a bit of a letdown. It's very strange that the focus ring tries to get away from your fingers when you zoom in. I've never seen such an odd design. And I love the cute way the rubber zoom ring has Tamron bulging out of it the whole way. The focus ring is very nice and precise, despite being quite loose. The autofocus on this lens is a little noisy and not very fast, and also it's not very accurate at all, at least not on this copy of the lens, so again that's a little disappointing. Well, let's look at the lens's image quality, and I do so with a little trepidation. A 16-year-old, third-party, long-range f2.8 zoom lens doesn't exactly sound like a recipe for success in the picture quality department. Well, let's start by looking at its performance on full frame using a 20 megapixel Canon 6D camera. At 28mm with the aperture wide open at f2.8, the image is acceptably sharp in the middle of the frame with slightly poor contrast. 
In the corners, we can see that things become quite soft, and there's a little chromatic aberration visible on the window frames. This is not great, but at least the lens is trying. Stop the lens down to f4, and things are considerably better, but it's still lagging behind the performance of modern camera lenses. Stop down again to f5.6, and the middle of the image is finally quite sharp, and the edges of the image are just about acceptable, staying that way even at f8. So things are okay, but not fantastic at 28mm. Let's zoom in a bit and look at the quality at 50mm. At f2.8, ouch, that looks about as soft as a swimming pool full of cushions and marshmallows. Contrast levels are also pretty bad, again, and there's a little purple fringing. The corners of the image seem to be even worse. What a shame. At least there isn't any chromatic aberration. Stop the lens down to f4 for a slight improvement, but even at f5.6 the corners are weak. However, the lens is pretty sharp in the middle of the frame. Again, not a great performance. Finally, let's zoom all the way into 105mm and see if the lens can redeem itself. The answer is, not really. The image quality in the middle is acceptable, where there's a sweet spot of sharpness. But you don't have to move far away from that sweet spot before the picture quality falls apart again. Those corners really are terrible. There's only a tiny improvement at f4, and again at f5.6 but the lens has become very sharp in the middle of the image, so that's one saving grace. Overall, even on a full frame camera, this lens really is very soft, especially in the corners. There is some sharpness to be found in the middle of its images, especially as you stop down, but compared to any modern camera lens, it's a disappointing performance. Let's take a look at the lens's distortion levels. Sorry for this blurry test chart, by the way, the lens wouldn't focus closely enough. But what you can see is, unsurprisingly, very heavy barrel distortion at 28mm, which will be noticeable in many everyday pictures. Even when you zoom in to 35mm, the barrel distortion is still there. At 50mm, it finally goes away, and at 105mm, it turns into moderate pincushion distortion. This is only what you'd expect from such a lens, but still, it's pretty ugly. The lens also suffers from heavy levels of vignetting or dark corners in your images at f2.8. It's especially strong when you zoom in to 105mm. Here's a picture taken at f5.6, and here's the same picture at f2.8. As you can see, the corners are really very dark indeed. This is technically an optical problem, but the silver lining is that it makes your pictures look a little more artistic. Another problem is that if you're shooting on a bright sunny day and at f2.8, you'll see some weird ghosting on contrasting edges of your images. You can see it in this picture. Spooky. I'm happy to say that the quality of the bokeh, or out of focus areas, is generally okay on this lens. At 105mm it looks fairly smooth, and this is more or less maintained at wider angles too, as you can see here at 28mm. However, complex backgrounds like foliage can get a bit busy and distracting. Unfortunately, this lens absolutely hates working against bright lights, or even anywhere near them. As you can see here, the contrast levels drop out, and you get all kinds of crazy lens flare patterns coming up. This is probably due to the large glass elements and complex internal lens design required for such a fast zoom lens. So overall, this lens doesn't really have much fight in it. Technically, the image quality is a witch's brew of all kinds of hideous problems. But you know what? I kind of like the images this lens can produce on a full frame camera, and I had fun testing it. The f2.8 aperture gives you lovely, out-of-focus backgrounds, especially at 105mm, even if your subjects are a bit soft. The quality of the bokeh isn't too bad, and the crazy vignetting actually looks quite nice in a way. And it's just cool to have an f2.8 lens with such a great zoom range. And there is a little sharpness right in the middle, which makes pictures like this quite nice. The image quality may be bad, but the lens is definitely a lot of fun. So, I'm now going to finish this lens review by punishing the lens even further, putting it through my sharpness test on a normal APS-C digital camera, 
in this case my 18 megapixel Canon 6DD. At 28mm and f2.8, the lens is soft in the middle of the image and even softer in the corners and even with all the softness, you can also see strong chromatic aberration in the window frames. There's a real improvement when you stop the lens down to f4 and image quality, or rather non-quality, is about as good as it gets at f5.6, where the corners remain unrepentant in their softness and chromatic aberration. In the middle of the image, however, the lens has at least become acceptably sharp. Let's zoom in a bit to 50mm. With the aperture wide open at f2.8, the pictures still manage to be softer than my favourite childhood teddy bear, and the corners of the image really are hideously soft, with crazy ghosting on contrasting edges. However, be prepared for a surprise. Stopping the lens down to f5.6 brings about acceptably sharp image quality. Even the middle of the image is looking fairly good now. There's another improvement at f8, but this is about as good as it gets. Let's end the torture by zooming all the way into 105mm. If we look closely at the picture quality at f2.8, we see that the softness is jaw-droppingly bad, from the middle of the frame right into the corners. I've never seen anything as bad as this, even in my last weird lens review. Thankfully, things are a little better at f4, especially in the middle, where you can just about make out what's going on, if you use your imagination. Stop down to f8 and the picture quality is just barely acceptable, although the corners are still pretty awful. So in conclusion, don't even think about using this lens on an APS-C digital camera, as if the full frame results weren't poor enough. But anyway, if you are a full frame camera user and you want a lens that will give you some fun images, or if you have specific needs for video work, then this could be an enjoyable lens for you to use, and it's certainly cheap enough to find on eBay. See you next time.